O.J. Simpson. Fact or fiction? Cause baby, now we got bad blood. You know we used to be mad love. So take a look what you've done. Cause baby, now we got bad blood. Now we got problems. And I don't think we can solve them. So take a look what you've done. And baby, now we got bad blood. Hey. The back gates. Because you know there's more. There's more of this cancer. 117 was the stain taken from the back gates. And you know, there was something very strange about it, wasn't there? The blood drops at Bundy were degraded and had extremely low DNA concentrations. 117 had enough for an RFLP test. It was 27 times as much as 47, the first blood drop, 45 times as much as 48, 270 times as much as 49, 51 times as much as 50, 11 times as much as 52. This slide, like most of them I'm going to show you, is in evidence. And you know who brought us that testimony, Gary Sims from the Department of Justice. That's 117, the one on the gate. This is 115 and 116, the one on the lower parts of the gate. 15 times as much as 47, 22 times as much as 48, 135 times as much as 49, 25 times as much as 56 times as much as 52. This supposedly has been out there from June 12th to July 3rd. And until that, there's no question. Sunlight degrades DNA. Moisture and bacteria degrade DNA. Why are these concentrations so much higher? And another point. There's DNA concentrations, but there's also a separate test, as you've learned, when you look at those yield gels for degradation. These samples are not degraded. How can that be? Nothing. The prosecution is now saying, well, it's on a different surface than the Bundy blood drops. Bundy blood drops are on cement. This is on a metal gate, painted metal gate. So something magical about this that will prevent it from degrading at all in over three weeks. It's, remember, the blood drop number 50 is just a few feet from this bottom portion of the gate that's very, very close to the surface and all the same environmental insults. But you know what proves this argument totally fallacious? And I asked this question of Gary Sims, if you can go back. Remember the blood from the handrail? That was one of the last questions I asked him. It's very curious to me that they've never typed that. They're still testing. Remember the blood on the handrail as you're leading up Bundy. Same kind of surface, totally degraded. Remember the samples from the front gate? There was blood on the front gate. Gary Sims' testimony, no question about that, severely degraded, just like Short the here. other samples from Bundy. Let's go back live inside the courtroom. That night, when they were entering the premises, the back gate, they had their flashlights. And they were looking up and down, and they think they saw some blood on the back gate. So they all testify to it so you know it's there. Well, first of all, we know, you've been there, that this gate was rusting. There were all kinds of darknesses, imperfections. There were berries all over there. There's all kinds of discolorations. And what did they really see with their flashlights? It's not clear what they saw with their flashlights, but... Where is it, Mr. Fung? They did, took no pictures of any blood on the back gate 117. There's some discoloration there that may be consistent with 115 if it's blood at all, but there is no 116. So there's no pictures either. On July 3rd, you saw blood on the gate that you collected. Yes. Let's look back at the picture of the gate on June 13th. Where is it, Mr. Fung? I can't see it in the pic photograph. And what else? 
What else? What else? There's EDTA on the stains from the back gate. Let's look at the back gate. No documentation or photos on June 13th. Discovered on July 3rd. High DNA concentration. No degradation. EDTA. Now let's discuss EDTA. EDTA is a preservative that was added to the blood samples taken from Simpson and the victims. And if EDTA is present on the evidence, the defense says the blood may have been planted. They asked for the tests to be done after the opening statement. Refute it. And they didn't put them on because it doesn't refute. Reasonable interpretation of the evidence that there's EDTA there, consistent with having come from a purple top tube, on the face of it. They didn't put them on. We had a call. I'm a special agent with the Federal Bureau of Investigation. The defense was hoping for a wild card, calling FBI agent Roger Martz to try and back up the theory that O.J. Simpson was set up, framed with his own blood. Martz first said yes. Agent Martz, would you agree that the pattern that you got on the sock Q206 is consistent with the presence of EDTA? Uh, it certainly warrants further testing. Uh, it responded like EDTA responded, yes. Is it consistent with the presence of EDTA? Yes. But after the mid-morning break, the EDTA disappeared. I am not convinced that EDTA is present on that sock. And I want to make that perfectly clear. Blazier accused Martz of conspiring no. with the prosecution. During the break, did you meet with the prosecutors? Uh, I stepped down and talked with them, yes. You talked to them about your testimony? Uh, somewhat. And you recall, uh, after the break, uh, you changed your demeanor, didn't you? I, I think I did, yes. Did you decide at the break that you needed to be much more of an advocate? No. But the defense's expert, Frederick Ryder, said he interpreted Martz's results as showing EDTA. On the basis of the entire picture, this has been, at these concentrations, presented as strongly as it can with present technology. As what? As EDTA. Now, today, Mart said Ryder had the wrong interpretation. My data has been misinterpreted by somebody else, and I wanted to, to prove that. But defense attorney Robert Blazier said the proof may be missing because Mart's destroyed some of his own notes. Where's the raw data that you did that formed the basis for all these charts right now? Uh, it, it no longer exists. It was erased off the computer when the case was dictated. It was been destroyed. Well, yes. Now, does the FBI in their computer system have what's called a backup system? Not for the, the instruments in the laboratory. There are three questions. Is there EDTA there? Dr. Reeder says yes. Agent Mart says could be consistent with EDTA based on the MSMS readings. If it isn't EDTA, says Martz, I don't know what else it could be. Next question. If it's EDTA, how much is there? Now, both of them agree that it is in parts per million, not parts per billion. And both agree when you examine the testimony, that if it is in parts per million, it cannot come from the EDTA we ingest in food that then is secreted into the blood. You don't have parts per million that way, because if you did, you'd be in serious, you'd have serious health problems. You, you wouldn't clot. Uh, you'd bleed to death, as Dr. Readers was pointing out. What's the concentration of EDTA in a purple top tube? Somewhere between 1,000 and 2,000 parts per million. Uh, w would you agree that if someone had 2,000 parts per million EDTA in their blood, they'd be dead? Well, for any sustained period of time, I, I think they use it also for transfusions. I don't know the exact amount that, that they use. It would not be a good idea, I don't think, to have that amount in your blood. I agree Th with that. Does that bear, that number, bear any relationship at all to what the FDA allows in terms of EDTA as a food additive? 
Uh, no, it, it, no, I don't believe it does. In your blood right now, there is a low level of EDTA because it's in everything you eat, it's in the laundry detergent, it's everywhere. You're going to find EDTA no matter what you do. But the defense is trying to insinuate that somebody took the blood that had been drawn from Simpson's arm and took that test tube and sprinkled it all over the crime scene. And it's ridiculous. The next question, and this is where they parted company, is the amount of EDTA here sufficient to have come from a purple top tube? <laughs> Agent Mart says, uh, Dr. Reeder says, unless you were treating somebody for lead poisoning, injecting EDTA into them, that is the only reasonable explanation for parts per million in these samples of EDTA. Agent Mart says, no, uh, I can't really say because I would expect there to be more EDTA in a sample left for three weeks on the back gate or uh, uh, in a, on a sock you know, that I'm seeing six months later. But he never did a single experiment to find out how much you would expect to get from stains that are months old and have subjected to environmental insults. And you saw that there were quantitation problems when they tested it. It would go up and down. So when you look at it, look at the credentials, Marts versus Readers. Readers has far more experience with EDTA. They wanted to hire him, or they consulted with him, I should say. Dr. Readers works with the FBI. They go to him and consult, as you heard, on cases. He was working on a case for them. Uh, with them at the time he came here to testify. He runs a reference lab that specialized in these issues. Now I'd like to talk about missing blood. Nurse Thano Paratus. The issue arose about how much blood was in the blood vial. Now, if you recall from the testimony, the first thing that happened is that Mr. Yamauchi got the blood and he stuck in a pipetter that takes one mil and he created the Fitzko card. So that's one mil. The next thing that happens, that's on June 14th. On June 21st, toxicology gets it. And toxicology does things in an appropriate way. They measured how much blood was in the tube. They take a tube, they, as Mr. Matheson described it, you fill it with water, you look at the other tube and you make a measurement. And they measured it to be 5.5. Now if it's 5.5 and we started with eight cc's and Yamauchi took one, there's 1.5 missing. No way out of that. No way out of that. Now, Mr. Matheson came in, and you saw these incredible experiments that he was performing, where he went and he started taking, he looked at all the other times people went into the tubes, and he's saying, well, you know, if you pipette it out and you pipette it out, you may lose something over time. But let's face it, the Matheson explanations can't get around the 1.5 missing right away. There's 1.5 missing right away, and toxicology proves it, and they knew it. So the only other way to explain the missing blood is thanoparatus must have been mistaken. That's the only way. And what I'll leave you with this morning are two clips from Thano Paratus. And which blood did you withdraw from Mr. Simpson? Did you withdraw from Mr. Simpson? Uh, approximately eight cc's. You say approximately, you did not measure the amount? Well, it could have been 7.9 or it could have been 8.1. And you uh, I just looked at the syringe and looked at, at about eight cc's. I withdrew the needle from his arm. And did you go through, and did you go through the same demonstration that you just showed for the camera today when I was at the dispensary. I can't remember. That's all right. Now, um, there was another statement that, that I wanted to uh, 
to ask you about that also took place at the preliminary hearing that we just get hold of that. And that was the statement that said, um, I just looked at the syringe. I just looked at the syringe and it looked at about eight cc's. That was Remember a stupid that? statement. Which I shouldn't have made. I look at it, I should have said it looked like it was enough. Which it was enough. I uh, eight cc's I just I was wrong in that eight cc's. I was wrong in that eight cc's altogether. Can you show us what you did do in terms of looking at the syringe after the blood? Or when the blood is being drawn from. Mr. Right. Simpson. Syringe here. Okay. The blood is pulled out. Pull it out. I pull it out. You're watching continuing coverage of the O.J. Simpson murder trial on CBS News. I just, I just looked at the syringe. Okay. I didn't turn it over. There is a, a part. It appears to have been prepared, shall we say, uh, to suit the prosecution's purposes when things just didn't fit. But the story is an absurdity. It is just an absurdity. It is not worthy of belief. It is a reasonable doubt in and of itself. Blood is missing. So let's review the bidding. Missing blood. Access opportunity and Mr. Paratus, the smoking gun. Detective Van Adder is walking around with this tube in a May 10th envelope, unsealed, going up for coffee, three hours. It is misnumbered. It comes in as 18, not 17, 18, after the sneakers, which were brought in the next morning. There is at least 1.5 mil missing, no question about it, early in the game because of the toxicology entry. And then we have Mr. Paratus's unsworn recantation. I mean, EDTA, missing blood. Coincidence? Corroboration. Something is terribly wrong. Testimony given in conjunction with the civil trial raised additional questions about LAPD's claim that 21 days after the murders, they returned to the Bundy crime scene and recovered blood drops from the back gate. On March 21st, 1996, the following exchange occurred during the deposition of Nicole Brown Simpson's best friend, Cora Fishman, Mr. Simpson's attorney, Robert Baker, is questioning Ms. Fishman about her observations while at Nicole's condo on June 14, 1994. Do you know why Ron Hardy was washing the walkway? Why? Why? Nod's head. I don't know. I guess cleaning up? So I don't know. Was the area around the walkway all wet when you were there on June 14? Yes. It was pretty much clean already. They had already cleaned up. Yes. And was the water around the walkway clean up and down the walkway? Yes. To the back gate? Uh-huh. Is that a yes? Yes. So the back gate was wet, true? Yes. Was anybody else cleaning up outside of the condominium that you saw? Oh, you know who was there too? Ralph. Ralph who? Ralph, you know, Maria's husband. Oh, Rolf. Rolf. Yeah, Rolf. Yeah. And what was he doing? He was outside. He was outside cleaning up? Yes, with Ron. How was he cleaning up the outside walkway? He was there, you know. He was cleaning up. They were both outside. Was he washing the area down? Yes, pretty much they were. Ms. Fishman's testimony was validated during the May 2nd, 1996 deposition of Nicole Brown Simpson's sister, Denise, during cross-examination by Mr. Simpson's attorney, Philip Baker. Do you know if... Did anyone wash down the walkway where Nicole and Ron were killed on June 17, 1994? Not on the 17th. When you were cleaning out the condominium, you don't know of anyone who was washing down the area where Ron and Nicole were killed? That happened three days before, two days before, June 14, 1990. I think they were up there on a Tuesday before that. Who is they? I think my brother and Ron washed down the blood. Down the blood. Was the blood on the back gate planted? Given the totality of evidence that we have reviewed throughout this episode, let's go back to Barry Sheck for the answer to this question. 
the most likely and probable inference is the one that is not for the timid or the faint of heart. Somebody played with this evidence, and there's no doubt about it. For more, visit ojsimpson.co. Thank you.